Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're to join me today here with only 5 stamina left. We fought a troll last episode, and we are now gonna enter his tower. I don't know if uh, terrible things are gonna happen in there, but hopefully not, because uh, we are probably gonna need to sleep. You step between the fallen blocks of the ruined tower. It stinks. Okay, let's uh, look around first. You pause to look around the broken, shattered room. This was a fine building once. There are hints of carvings and decorations on the stonework, even though all of it has now tumbled away, and the tower is open to the elements. Niches set into the walls once held idols and statues, and a curving spiral staircase once climbed upwards, but it is now broken halfway. Okay, so I can't cast a spell from here. Uh, so let's search, oh no, actually I can climb the stairs, which is good. Uh, let's search the ruins first. You look around the ruined blocks of the fallen tower, but find nothing in the darkness. Well, that's, that would be an easy way, an easy thing to do, but, uh, to, to fix, but whatever. You wind your way up the stairs to about, uh, halfway up the tower's height. The stairs, <coughs> excuse me. The stairs end a few paces further on. They have been cheered off by the same force that removed the entire roof of the tower. Uh, step to the edge. You step, you step carefully to the broken edge of the stairs, two st more steps, taking each one at a time in case the stone should give way under your weight. After three steps you stop, the broken edge of the stairs is now one step away. I mean, I'm, I, I got this far, so might as well continue. You take another step, and then another, and then another. Still climbing. Looking back, the stairs behind you seem quite intact. Looking in front, there are once again only a couple before they fall to ruin. And yet, with every step you make, it seems more stairs appear. Really? Is this a magical stair? You pace step by step up the tower, spiraling round and around, until finally you reach a trapdoor in the non-existent roof. You push the trapdoor open and step out onto the roof of the tower. <gasps> the wind whistles past your head, ruffling your hair. You are now standing high above the pass atop a tower that was not here when you passed through the path below. A brass beacon of, of, of the kind you have seen before stands here. There is a faintest shimmer of magic in the air here. At first glance, the beacon seems quite intact, but there is no light shining from it. You step away from the trapdoor and walk out across the roof. Okay, let's check the edge first. You head over to the edge of the tower just the, just by the end of the large brass lantern. Learn, leaning out over the edge, you have a surprise. The tower below is still not there. Looking down, you see nothing but ruin and rubble. And yet, under your feet, the planks are quite sound and solid. You look out across the land towards a deep crater in the earth that is split like a bleeding sore by a black hissing vent in the ground. No doubt this hellhole was the quarry used to build the citadel that lies beyond. Oh, really? Oh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, the quarry, by the way, not the quarry. The quarry. Let's look at the citadel. Manpang itself dominates the skyline, enough to chill the hardest of hearts. At its top is a tower with a single high window, the Archmage's turret, turret room. And if he's dead, if he's dead, we're gonna need to go back to the past. Oh my god, let's look at the beacon. This game just... I, I was expecting this one to be easier than the second, than the third one, I mean. It's not... Oh boy, anyway, looking back at the lantern, you are surprised to see that there is indeed a very faint light spilling from its end. It seems its very beam, its beam is active, but it has been focused into an extremely narrow beam that reaches across empty space towards something in the distance. You follow the beam with your eyes, and of course, you see immediately where it points, the central tower of Manpang. You step back from the edge of the tower, you hear a quiet cough from somewhere behind you. Uh... You look around, but can't see nothing. You guys remember those voices that we heard? <clears throat> I mean, we got... We were assailed by... Oh. Oh, yeah, I need to click. Uh, we were assailed by a few voices in the previous games. Uh, in the previous game, I mean... I mean, um... This could be the... This could be the quarry over here, rather than this thing. Um... And there were people... I, I wonder if it's the Archmage that's been following me. Uh, but he can't really do anything. Oh, what about the crown? Why would he want a crown if he's dead? How could he control? I don't. I have no idea. There's so many things. So many questions. <sighs> anyway, uh, we don't really have a choice here. Let's look at the beacon and see where we can go. And also, the beacon is he? Is it gonna heal me? I think it is. You move over to the eye of the beacon. A shimmering blue crystal is set at the end of it. Um, I can turn off the beacon. That will kill. That will kill the guy. Let's touch the crystal. 
You reach into the inn to touch the crystal and you are rewarded by a sense of healing wellness that floods your veins. The beacon seems unchanged as you step back. You try to turn the heavy beacon, but unlike the towers in the backlands, this one appears firmly fixed, its eyes, its eye pointing out towards Manpeng and its central tower. Now, if I remove this, what is gonna happen? Because uh, it's pointing that way over there. You think that the tower would be this one, right? Which means... Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> that rotation was not really that intended. I had my mouse... My mouse was, like, mouse is stopped right now. You can see it stopped right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's pointing over there. Uh, there's a lot of towers all over the place. I need. I, I want to turn off the beacon. I think I want to turn off the beacon. I have no idea where the... T uh, if I need to come back, I'll come back. But uh, it might be impossible to turn off the beacon because it might be warded against something. I might take damage for that as well. Hope not. Uh, you look for some way to deactivate the beacon, who knows what damage it might do to the Archmage's plan, but you can find nothing, and the lantern is too large to destroy. Okay, there it is. You step away from the beacon. J just then, a robed, a robed figure steps out from a shadowy spot behind the lantern. Well, who's this figure? You approach the figure boldly. Greetings, it declares. And what are you doing here? Uh... I Greetings. The figure nods. You seem rebar remarkably intact, it observes. Intact? Indeed, it is most curious since the lower floors of this tower are home to more than one mind snake, and I would not expect any traveler to simply walk in. Oh. I'm not afraid of mind snakes. That is simply not possible, the creature replies calmly. It's like saying run does not make you wet. Oh, I thought you were going to say that it's impossible to be afraid of mind snakes. That would be an interesting thing, but apparently you're just a buffoon. Um, let's see. You are wrong. The tower is ruined. Yeah, that makes sense that it would be ruined, because this was built before by the uh, Archmage, and uh, then this was kept intact, intact by some kind of timey-wimey magic, and uh, the rest of the tower did not. That's an interesting thing. You are wrong. The tower is ruined, I say. The creature looks around and shrugs. Evidently, it is not. The creature strokes its sharp shin. All, all in all, the situation is most unexpected. Uh, let me ask you a few questions. Indeed, the creature returns in some surprise. So, when I entered this tower, it was ruined. Uh, you explain. The creature guarding the tower cocks its hooded head and considers what that, that with some interest. Remarkable, it breaches. Uh, I sense the truth in your words, though I cannot understand them. Perhaps I should summon a snake up here to test your assertions. There's something strange about the creature's speech, as though the conversation was happening out of its proper order. So, was this conversation... Well, I have seen beacons like this before, you tell the creature. This is the last of the great beacons built across the backlands, the watching creature declares. They are lenses, and like all lenses, they collect, focus, and deliver. Only they do not focus and deliver light. They focus time. Indeed, that is correct. So, you are funneling time to Manpang? You reply, for what purpose? For my master, the Archmage, he lifts a hand to his forehead re reverentially. He desires immortality. It cannot be achieved, but extreme longevity is a close second. Well, uh, where can I find him? In his tower, of course. That is where this last beacon shines, and where he sits to drink in the light. The creature nods to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I must resume my, cal my calculations, he declares. You nod in return. If you survived your journey up my tower, no doubt you will survive the journey down. Yeah, I think the... Um, I think the creatures are, uh, the, the mind snakes are, uh, are only in the past. Let's go down. You return to the trapdoor and make your way back down the stairs, which disappear behind you as you go. And there it is. You are back in the ruined tower. The wind blows through the broken structure above. I could sleep here, but, uh, and actually I should probably, can't really cast a spell. Let's see what, uh, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a, it's a good time to sleep. Let's go ahead and do that. You scramble into one of the niches for a little shelter. Setting down your pack, you try to stretch out despite the cold. You do not need to eat more today. Well, let's close my eyes and see what happens. You lie back and try to forget your troubles. You feel quite safe here, and you do not dream. Oh, that was perfect. Ruined tower. During the past day, you gained three provisions, lost 13 gold, explored the peaks and ravines of the Zanzunus, and found one new clue. Yep. You wake and stretch. The ruins have kept you safe. Can I search? 
No, that's not what I wanted. No, let's do the misclicks. Misclicks. I want to search the ruins now. You search around the ruins and come across something black under a stone. It's folded. It's fo yeah. I'm gonna pull it free. You folded cloth, huh? You pull it free. The cloth is thick, uh, thick and heavy, and has been neatly folded into a square. There's something bulky inside, which you can feel through the cloth. But whatever it is, is not heavy. Um, something bulky inside. Unwrap it. You unwrap the cloth. In its center is a short length of knotted rope. In its center. Okay, look at the rope first. You look at the knotted rope, but its purpose is, is unclear. Is it a too short? Is it? It is too short to climb and too thick to tie to anything. Why did anyone wrap it up and leave it here? Well, open the black cloth. You turn your attention to the cloth. It has two loose sleeves and a heavy hood. After a moment, you realize what it is. It's a habit of a monk, and the knotted rope is a belt. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Let's look it over. It seems in one piece and free of moth holes. You could try it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. You gather up the monk's concealing habits and quickly put it on. Oh, look at that! We have a new new key, a new thing! You will now pass as a monk. Well, make a move. I'm not gonna climb out, uh, upstairs with this. Uh, because there's no need. You are back outside the tower. You can smell the troll's corpse, even from this distance. And let's move along. You push... You, your path continues. Yeah, let's climb up. And then from here, I think... Uh, this is destroyed. I would think that maybe we could find another tower that... Another beacon or something that uh, lets us go right there. Because I, this, is a, this seems like a dead end. I'm gonna try and go there. But, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see if it works. The climb up... Onto the, uh, you climb up onto the cliff path. The early morning sun makes the air glow. The path splits here, snaking around the edge of a mountain while a branch works its way downwards towards the stone tower. Looking west, you see the end of a narrow wooden bridge. There are three ways to go from here. I could go west, I could go down, or I could go along the path, which is ultimately where I want to go, but I want to explore everything, and I don't think time is going to be of the essence here anymore. Or it wasn't before, actually. I didn't know that, but it wasn't before. You could you can take all the time you need in the previous game and still get all the serpents. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to affect anything in this game, but in the previous game it didn't affect anything, that's for sure. So it doesn't really matter. I think we'll be fine here. You follow the path westwards away from Manpang. A narrow rope bridge leads south across the ravine from here. Uh, I'm going to make a move. I'm not going to the, look at the bridge. There's no need for that. You follow the path as it curves around the slope of a collapsed mountain, picking a collapsed mountain? Really? How do you know it's a mountain then, if it's collapsed? It's not a mountain anymore, is it? Picking your way over fallen stones and tumbled, sh uh, tumble tumbled boulder boulders. This was clearly a major road once, but it has long since fallen into ruin. The air moves a little around you, still icy but fresh. You must keep going. Hmm, fresh eye, fresh air. Is it? Is it any? Kind of keyword right there or something. You follow the trail around the mountainside. Finally, the road ends outside a ruined building. The path beyond the building is nothing but rock and ruin. I'm gonna enter the building. You approach the door to the building. It is not locked, but the frame has warped and uh, now the door is stuck. Open by a mere crack. Look over the... No! Peer through the crack, apparently. Sure. You peer through the crack into the dusty darkness beyond. The place is clearly long abandoned. You lean back from the doorway and look over the structure. The building is two floors high with a tiled... <coughs> excuse me. A tiled roof that has partially fallen in. Its main door is small and set between large bottle glass windows. This was clearly a great house once. A uh, bracket sticks out from the wall above the door. Perhaps it once held a sign? Okay. Um... Pull the door open. That's not gonna work, right? You slip your fingers into the crack into the door and try to haul it open, but the door is firmly wedged between the bent frame and the earth below. It will not shift as much as an inch. Uh, I could cast a spell. What can I do here? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh man, I don't. My voice it should be okay. So I got the S. Uh. We have the sense danger here. I don't think that there's gonna be. Actually, I, I probably should cast this one. Let's see what I can do. Sense danger. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic. This place is haunted, the voice tells you. A terrible, cruel, cruel minded spirit lives here. Its message delivered, the spell fades. Okay, I'm gonna. <clears throat> I think I, I'm fine to cast the uh, to fight spirits. If it's undead or anything. I mean, a spirit is not normally undead, right? Uh, so we got the dop over here. That's not gonna work because the door is not actually locked. We have the um, fireball, which is, I don't think would work. We got the huff. Oh, that, that I could cast that. 
Huh, because he doesn't spend anything, so let's do that. You weave the constellations into a pattern around you, lifting the gale horn and blowing a loud note. A powerful wind gathers as you play the horn, but it serves only to slam the door more firmly shut. Oh boy, that's not good. Uh, yeah, it does I don't think that's gonna make our efforts... Uh, any, any worse. I would like the big one, that's what I really wanted. Oh, the J apparently cannot be cast. We got six? Oh! But the six, they actually don't work. Do they? Because they, they, they can't make... So I think I, I need to force this with my... With my sword. <clears throat> Let's see, lever the sword of my sword, lever the door of my sword. You slip our legendary sword into the crack and try to lever the, s the door. Nothing happens and the door does not budge, but at least you do not damage the blade. Okay, that's actually what I was expecting. I mean, if, if it were to damage the blade, I probably would be able to use my old sword. Because that one, yeah. Let's try the dop. It doesn't work, come on. It, it's not gonna work. You cast the enchantment and the door, slammed shut by the spell of high winds, creaks open once more. This time wide enough that you might slip inside. Oh, apparently it's open doors, not really open locks. Dust and stale air drifts out from the dim interior of the building through the doorway. Which way now? Well, inside. I wanna I wanna fight this thing. You pick your way through the buckled the buckled door frame. Inside you see a large room dotted with tables. Grass peeks up between the floorboards. The roof has collapsed in one corner and ivy trails down the broken beams, settling on a long counter. Um, draw your sword. You draw your sword in readiness, but nothing stirs. This place seems empty. Even the rats have moved on. This place, uh, this must have been an inn. It sits beside a well-trod road, so travelers must have come this way at some point, but it, it has long since fallen into disrepair. A mug sits on the table, its handle missing. Across the room, there is a cramped passageway. Let's search around first. You make a quick search uh, of the corners and rubble piles, unearthing a moldering piece of paper and a few coins. The paper is flimsy with age, the writing faded, you only manage to make out a, a few lines. The beckoning finger welcomes you, sorcerer, to the last resting place before the fortress. A hot meal is two bronze pieces and comes with a cup of ale. Bread and cheese are one bronze piece. So this is from... the beckoning finger is this place. Uh, this is from the old stuff, this is from before. It seems unlikely the prices are still valid. Well... Bread and cheese, a bronze piece. Oh, that's bronze, yeah. Uh, however, and the beacon you found in the past is in ruins and won't help you rebuild the place. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm gonna pick up the coins, I guess. Hunching over, you pick up the coins and examine them. They are very thin bronze, green with age. On the one side, is, I, again, I, I think the bronze doesn't oxidize like that. Doesn't go green. But I might be wrong. I think that's copper. It goes green. I, I'm, I'm almost certain that copper goes green, but bronze might go as well. Uh, on the other side, on the one side is a simple picture of a bird of prey, talons outstretched. Hmm. On the other, there is a profile of a hooked-nosed woman with a stern expression. There is writing along the edge of the portrait, but you do not recognize the language. Are they simply ancient or from a faraway land? But in your travels to the past, you have never seen a coin like this or an another portrait of this woman. Okay. Look at the bar. You go over to the bar, still littered with the remnants of the inn's daily life. The furnishings are all in bad shape, but from neglect rather than violence. The inn was probably abandoned when the travelers stopped taking this road. On a shelf underneath the counter, you see a rack of dusty bottles. You look around, uh, look along the, f the rack. Most of the bottles are wine or exotic ales, but one la label catches your eye. Fire water, but the bottle is dry as a bone, as are all the others. Yes, people will, will already have, have um, gotten that or something, I don't know. Fire water from a thousand years ago, that might, that might have been something else. Something else, nice and aged. Of course, it depends on what kind of fire bottle, uh, fire water it is, because uh, there's all sorts. Uh, so we got um, Farseer over here. Might work. Let's go with that. So you see the tavern, but in good repair. A few travelers sit at the table, sipping drinks. You watch the door open, and a young woman enter in, soaked through. The landlord beams at her. Awful night. Yes, you headed to the fortress. She nods. Yes, I am to study. My name is Valikesh. Oh, good, good, replies the landlord cheerfully, putting an arm around the young woman. Plenty stay here on their way. Few return, but never mind that. Come in and rest. If you leave early tomorrow, we will be better before sunset. Uh, the vision fades as the woman accepts a bowl of stew. Was this an echo of the past or a happier future? Uh, I don't think... Valikesh. Yeah, I, th I think I recognize that name. That was actually a pretty interesting thing. It, it should be... A, I don't know if it's the future or not, but... 
Uh, I mean, it should be the future, right? Oh, the dog, that's right. I'm gonna need this. Heal disease. I'm gonna cast a spell in a potion, and I'm gonna drink the potion right there, full health, and I'm gonna make a move. You could uh, explore the hallway or leave, and I'm gonna explore the, lo the hallway, and now I'm at full health, so we should be okay. You make a way down the hallway. It leads to several black back rooms, but most have collapsed, and now only the nearest two are accessible. One is smaller, only containing a single bed. You look around the empty hall and discover a handle in the ground, a trapdoor leading to uh, some kind of cellar, perhaps? The back rooms are almost certainly mere wreck and ruin. Okay, so I have the cellar, I have the private room, let's go with the large room first. Uh, the rotten door of the large room yields to your touch. Brackish water seeps from the wood. In the room beyond are many beds, but they have been stacked against the wall. A chest lies open, it's locked, smashed, and one spot in the floor sags alarmingly. Uh, let's look at that. You look at the sagging patch of the floor from uh, cautious distance. It seems rainwater has pulled here and drained through year in year for some time. Uh, <clears throat> not step onto it. Can I stomp onto it? Make it break or something? I don't want to fall, but sure. You stomp down with abandoned onto the sagging floor. Your foot goes straight through the old wood. As you struggle to pull it out, you hear a loud creaking. The floor, floor collapses underneath you and you fall through. Well, that's okay. We are now in the cellar. You land on soft dirt, staring up at the ragged hole. You sit up, seeing that you are in a cellar. The trap door provides a crack of light above. A large hole in the ceiling provides more. Okay, I'm gonna cast a spell, the sun spell, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I got the sun right here. Yes, I have. Fantastic. And I can sense, da sense danger, but we kind of did that already, so we don't need that. You turn the starlight into alignment around you until the sun jewel starts to give off a magical white glow. The corners of the room jump to vivid life. You peer around in the gloom, the floor is dirt, mushrooms peeking through, and in the corner a tree has managed to grow. It only reaches your chin, but you spy a few very small apples hanging from its branches. Um, let's pick an apple. You grab a single healthy looking apple from the tree and stow it away in your pack. The mushrooms are scattered around the cellar, glistening in the dim light and glowing slightly. There's a large cluster in one corner which you squat beside. I'm gonna pick a few. Do we need, have we read about mushrooms before? I think very long ago, I think it was in the first game even, we heard something about mushrooms, but we never did find any. And I said something, I said like, I said something that if I looked back at it, I, I would draw some conclusion from this. But anyway, you grasp a few mushrooms closer together. They are more entrenched than you would have expected. A small tug doesn't budge them. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna pull harder, but it might be a creature in here. It says it's haunted. It might not be undead. And also, uh, I w as I was reading this, I was thinking maybe I said, "Oh, next time I pick up mush." Oh, and I said maybe I said I th the thing I th thought is maybe I said, uh, "Who would ever pick up mushrooms in the middle of this land?" And I hope that's not what I said because that's what I just tried to do. Let's dig into the dirt. You root, uh, you root around in the dirt by the mushrooms. The mushrooms in the corner here are growing from one source. You push more dirt away, exposing something pale. The forest of mushrooms prevents you from seeing what it is. You yank out the mushrooms and the object comes in it. It is a pale and irregular sli it is pale and irregular, slick with dirt and moisture. You notice a fetid smell. Drop it. You drop the object, mushrooms break off it and roll. The object's shape is revealed. It is a hand. You back away, a buried hand, sprouting with fungus. You peer closer, you cannot help yourself. The hand has mostly rotted away. The remaining pieces of dry, stringy flesh are colonized by the mushrooms. Who buried it here? And where is the rest of the body? Can I set it afire? Because if it's haunted, and this might be the way to, uh, to destroy the, the ha haunting, uh, probably not gonna be able to do anything. Can I cast the sun again? I don't need the sun again. Uh, I got the fog. Uh, then got the pop. Oh, the spells here are all... I got the zen. That would be any... Oh, that's for me to get away. Uh, what about the other one? It's the zip. Teleportation. Yeah, I don't want that for right now. For right now. Excuse the hiccup. So I got the fog over here. I think that's for protection. If I could cast the fog for free, but the fog is actually pretty costly. This one's stamina. Uh, I don't really... Can I sense danger over here? Can I do something? I can't sense danger. Let's do this again. You weave the spell and a steady voice begins to speak to you. There is no danger here other than the room itself. The voice murmurs. 
It's words spoken, the enchantment fizzles away. Okay, let's climb back up. You go over to the ladder and try to climb up, but the rungs of the ladder are rotten through. They turn to powder your, under your weight. You tumble back to the dirt. Okay, I'm gonna cast Zen here. The room itself, which means that if I fall... Uh, I was thinking, couldn't I not unbury the corpse or something? Consulting the stars, you bind the magic and the meditation begins to, uh... The medallion, I mean, begins to glow as you ride gently up in the air. I'm gonna float up. You float back up through the trapdoor and settle on the floor of the room above. Hall hallway it is. Okay, so apparently there's no danger. We're good. Upon first glance through the doorway, the room at the back appears to be a private bedchamber, but as you enter, you see signs of violence. Unlike the larger dormitory, the furniture is smashed and possessions lie scattered about. Half a mirror still hangs in a frame, and pieces of splintered wood litter the ground. The bed is the only thing truly untouched. On the bed, among the moth-eaten sheets, sits a note. You pick up the note off the bed and read it. Horrors, it reads. It reads. Surrounded by horrors, I have discovered the tavern is haunted. I must flee. If you read this, heed my warning. Run. Run now. The voice pipes up behind you. But it's fake, you know. A fake. Sorry to disappoint you, the voice uh, replies the voice, but he'll be more disappointed if you aren't scared. And you shouldn't be. Okay. You turn around, but no one is there. Oh, wait a minute. This is somebody. Somebody's talking to me with this thing. But it's fake. Sorry to disappoint you, but he'll be more disappointed if you aren't scared. It's like the other thing, the, the, the scary guy that we found before. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So there's no danger? Huh. Anyway, you turn around, but no one is there. Still, the voice pipes up again, this time with a hallway. Uh, this time from the hallway. You worked on that for a whole afternoon, it says. It sounds like a young girl. Oh, boy. Okay, I am going to leave the room here. I don't think we need to be here anymore. But I am also going to end the episode because we're out of time. So I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.